This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. Hey, can you see that big longhorn on the wall above my shoulder? That was donated to the Fort Wallace Museum by Carl and Wanda Urich. That's pretty impressive. And you know those longhorns have been used for hat racks, put on the fronts of Cadillacs, just all kinds of things. Just like antlers, they're uh, put together for chairs, like there's one uh, I think over in North Platte for, uh, in Bill Cody's home, got that great antler chair. Just all kinds of cool stuff that can be made with antlers, horns, powder horns, you know, blowing the horn, just all kinds of uses. Of course, the animals had pretty big use for them from the beginning. I started looking into the difference because Dr. Jake was busy and didn't have time to explain it to me, so I resorted to the internet, folks, and I found a really cool article by Kara Kovlicek on mental floss in addition to tons of other stuff, National Park Service, and I kind of combined those and put them into this story for you so that you'll know the difference between antlers, horns, and tusks. Have you ever wondered what the difference is between horns and antlers? Well, let's talk about it a little. Well, antlers are possessions of deer. All deer have antlers. And for the most part, just males have antlers. Now there are exceptions to that, being reindeer and caribou that the females do. Antlers do vary a little bit in their size and the shape, and depending on what type of deer possesses those antlers. One species of deer, the white-tailed deer, is indigenous all across the United States, so this type of antler is very familiar to most people. Now, a different type of antler is a fallow deer. Now, the fallow deer have a palmated antler, and they get the word palmated because it looks like the palm of our hand. It has a broad, flat piece with little appendages coming off of it. Now, every year, deer lose their antlers and grow a whole new set. Horns are totally different. An animal is born with little bitty nubs that develop into these long horns, but they stay with the animal the entire life. The horn has a bone core that is part of the skull and is attached to the skull. And on the outside, there is a keratin sheath. And the keratin is the same thing that our hair and fingernails is made out of. Antlers are made out of calcium, the same as our bones. Now, just like deer, it depends on the type of species that it is as to what their horns look like. And horns can look very different. Another thing that varies between species is whether or not the females have horns. And that varies greatly. One good way to cheat if you're visiting the wildlife ranch is to refer to our guidebook. For every animal, we also make note if the horns are possessed in just the males or in males and females. I did bombard you with a lot of information, so just to recap quickly. Antlers are possessed mainly by males, except for reindeer and caribou. They're also made out of the same thing that our bones are made out of, and are grown and lost every single year. Horns, on the other hand, can be possessed by males or females, or sometimes just males, and are made out of the same thing our hair and fingernails are made out of, and they keep them their entire life. I hope this helped you distinguish a little bit more about the difference between antlers and horns. We look forward to seeing you on your next African Safari Texas style at Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 